Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> so I was just listening to the Emma Chamberlain podcast, one where she's talking about good habits. She loves reading and she loves talking about books that like get you excited and motivated. So what I wanted to do was my version and it's basically fashion coffee table books. I did a part one to this on my channel already. And so I'll have that linked in the card above and in the description box below. But I wanted to go over a few that I either got recently or a little while ago, but ones that I didn't focus on in my last video because they're just so good. And if I, honestly, if I had a nickel for every time that I got a compliment in my home about fashion coffee table books that I use as decor, I'd be a millionaire. They just make such a big difference. Even if you don't read these from cover to cover, which I actually do, at least you can get the use out of them to decorate your space, whether it's your office, your bedroom, dining room, living room. I'm gonna give you some shots of in my house and I hope you like them. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. In the last video that I did talking about my fashion coffee table books, one of the artists that I mentioned was Peter Lindbergh, and I have a book by him, I'm pretty sure it's called Portraits of Women. It's stunning, it's so beautiful. So I ended up getting another one by him, and this is Peter Lindbergh, it just says on fashion photography. It's gorgeous. And obviously Kate Moss in the front of anything is gonna mean that it's gonna be a beautiful book and probably a bestseller. Just the shots that he's able to get, like there's so much emotion behind everything. And that's what I think is really amazing about photography. And obviously anybody that enjoys doing photography themselves can understand and appreciate just the creativity that goes into each one of these shots because it's something that is so curated, but it's also so raw. And that's what I absolutely love about Peter Lindbergh. So this is a really great one. And again, like because of this cover, it can sit so nicely on a coffee table or an end table. I put a tray at the end of my bed. Sometimes I'll put like a single flower in a little bud vase, like just make it a little bit like curated and aesthetic because that's just what I'm all about. But having a fashion coffee table book on there too, just sort of brings the whole thing together and obviously anchors it in what my passion is, which is fashion. As I'm looking through all these, I'm realizing that not all of them are strictly fashion related. I also love like art, especially like Renaissance art and sculpture. I lived for a while in Italy and one of the greatest places that I visited was the Uffizi in Venice. No, it's not. One of the greatest places that I visited was the Uffizi in Florence. And this is a book dedicated to masterpieces of Western sculpture and it's incredible. It gives me that same sort of feeling and it's just very like Italian Renaissance sculpture. It's gorgeous. So this is another great one. I don't want to hold it up because these books are so heavy. So even if you do have a lot of fashion coffee table books already, if you sort of branch out into ones that are like giving the similar vibe like this one that obviously has this like cognac color on the outside with the gold lettering and the same thing on the spine. Like it's just, it's gonna accent anything that it's with. And even if you just sort of use this as the base and then on top put like a candle or something, especially some brass candlestick holders, like it would be beautiful. And this is actually something that I've done myself in my home. So just one more to think about. The next one is definitely a fashion coffee table book and it's this one, it's massive. and. Oh my goodness. And what I actually just use this one for is the spine. It says the making of Gucci on it. And this one I actually stack in my TV stand. I have a few like different areas where I can put little decorative items and in the centers where I stack this book and a couple others. So I'll show a little cutaway of that. I love that it's big and chunky and adds a black accent if you sort of have to ground a little vignette that you're doing, this one is really great for that. But if you did need a black accent somewhere in your house and maybe wanted to layer it with white on top just to sort of lighten it up, this is a great one. The next two I'm gonna show together and they're from the brand Cereal and they're city guides. I love these. I have one for Paris and one also for London and I've read through these because they give 
really, really good recommendations on what to do if you're in these cities. Paris I've been to, but London I haven't yet. So sometimes I just go through and just imagine myself there because it gives recommendations for a lot of different things, like different restaurants to go to and different spots to shop at. And I think they're just so cute. So I actually have this in my dining room at one end. I just have like a little accent chair and a chest and on top of that with a lamp, I have these two books. So they're always there if I just feel like sitting down and reading for a minute and sort of want to keep in the sort of aesthetic travel mindset, if that makes any sense. But I really do love these books. And because they're so light and little, they can kind of go anywhere, not just in your home, but you can take them with you. If you just want something to sort of browse through instead of a magazine, this to me is a little bit more my style. I would rather read about a city that I'd rather travel to. And these are just great for that. Just in case I haven't mentioned this already, I am going to have links to all of the books that I mentioned down below. I will title the links based on each book that I'm showing, but just in case you need to just treat yourself a little bit, I'm going to have some links for you to shop just down below. The next one, so going along with fashion and art, I also love poetry and it's not something that I dedicate enough time to, but this book, I think is gorgeous. It's huge and it looks just very like worn and old and especially because of how the actual book papers are. I just think it's stunning. I actually found this at a little used bookstore in my hometown and I just think that it's so beautiful. And I typically actually stack this one with the masterpieces of sculpture, whatever the last one was called. I love having this one, the Caravaggio book from my last video and then this poetry book on top. I just love the sort of color blocking of it. And even though they're basically all the same tone, I think it catches the eye in a way that's really beautiful. And again, with like the gold lettering, it just couldn't get any more my style. I actually have read quite a few poems from this and it's called Songs and Poems of Robert Burns, who's a Scottish poet. And it's so cute. Like I love the sort of old English style writing. And not only is the book really beautiful, but the poems inside of it are also just like a really fun thing to read. Very different from like a novel style of writing, which I love because it just sort of breaks it up a little bit. And in order for me to keep myself reading, it definitely has to be something that I am really engaged in. And this just does it for me. This next one is like the quintessential fashion coffee table book. It's the Tom Ford one. It's like insanely heavy. The case comes off and then it is the same style cover on the front with a portrait of Tom Ford in the back. And I think I actually did mention that I bought this book on my channel, I think in the designer haul video, something like that. And I love it. I think that it's a little bit risque at times. I'm pretty sure he's coming out with a second version or just released it. It's also a little bit avant-garde, but I think that just having the Tom Ford label, I know books shouldn't be judged by their covers, but I absolutely am doing that with this one. Adding this again, really anywhere in your home just brings a level of like luxury to it that just reminds you of what you might see in a magazine. Like I love a really, really curated space. So having this, and especially obviously because it's black and white, just sort of goes with my aesthetic. So I'm not gonna lie, this one was a little bit more on the expensive side. Normally I try and find my books from like a secondhand place or find them online. I've definitely seen quite a few of my fashion coffee table books on Etsy. So that's another really great way to go. But I ended up getting this one at Winners, which is like the Canadian TK Maxx or TJ Maxx equivalent. But if you do a little bit of digging, you'll probably be able to find it at a better price. But if you are like me and just think that this is sort of like an icon in itself when it comes to fashion coffee table books, this is definitely one that I would recommend at the end of the day. I have just a couple more to mention. And this one, this is like my pop of color, which is hilarious because it's so muted. And I actually don't think that it's properly coming up. It's more of like a sagey green color, which is beautiful. And I love having a little bit of a muted color in a space with a lot of different neutrals and whites. So that's basically how I've styled this in my home. But this one is called The History of Impressionism. And again, I just found this at like a secondhand bookstore. Whenever I find one, I just go in and go straight to like the art history section 
Typically, I haven't found a lot of secondhand bookstores that have like a fashion section that is any good, if I'm being honest. There's that one store in Toronto that I've mentioned about a hundred times, but other than that, I typically look for art history books or different like Renaissance art books, but this one is beautiful. Not only is it beautiful on the cover, but the spine of it, just the dainty gold lettering gets me every time. So this is one that, again, I would recommend definitely going this route because if you can't find this sort of color in a fashion coffee table book, you're almost guaranteed to find it in a different genre of book. And as long as it has a pretty cover, like that's kind of all that it needs to have. If you are just trying to get a styling piece and more of a decor piece, then something that you might actually read, but it still is worth it to just take a little bit of a read into them because you never know what you're gonna find. And maybe it's gonna be something that just catches your attention and you're gonna love to go through it. But this is one that I'm definitely happy that I got. And it's the second last one. The last one is completely different, but I definitely still want to mention it because you might not have thought of this style of book for a decor piece. Here's the last one, and it's actually a cookbook, but this one just reminded me of the fact that sometimes cookbooks can be really, really beautiful, and this one was designed by an interior designer, so obviously it's gonna have a little bit more of an aesthetic feel. It's called Damn Good Food, and it's actually from a friend of mine. Not only are the recipes amazing, I'm actually cooking my way through this at the moment, but it's just so cute. So even if you needed something to sort of spruce up your kitchen, you might not consider a fashion coffee table book or an art history book to put in your kitchen, but you can actually buy on Amazon like little book stands, little cookbook stands, and this I think just would be so cute in basic any style kitchen since it's black and white it kind of just goes with anything so this is just a really really cute one and obviously I just wanted to support a local business and a local author I think it's just so cool that she made this book anyway she just decided to take up writing a cookbook during the pandemic which is like the ultimate way to spend your time because I most certainly was not that productive. And going through the recipes, like they're amazing. It's a mix of different things, so it's not just one particular cuisine, but this is definitely one that is worth checking out. I also love the size of it, and I love that it's smaller, because if you're stacking this and you wanted this as more of a decor piece, then it's nice to just have something smaller to put on top that just sort of like finishes off the stack. So that's everything for part two of my fashion coffee table book collection. And if you wanted to check out part one, again, I'm gonna have it linked in the description bar below, but definitely check out some of these books that you might not have thought of before, or let me know which one I should buy next because most likely I'm gonna end up just continuing to buy fashion or art books because it's just what I love. They just make me so happy and I love seeing them all throughout my house. If you have any questions about any of them, feel free to let me know and I'll see you very, very soon in my next one. Bye guys. Also, as a side note, I just finished filming the B-roll for this video, so all of like the different book shots and where they were placed in my home. And if you wanted to see any more like home decor sort of stuff, just let me know, because I feel like that would be so fun to do and a little bit of a breath of fresh air here on my channel. So let me know. Okay, that's it. Bye.